Hello, and welcome to this session. In this presentation, I will provide you with four digital learning tools that promote student voice while preparing your learners to be successful in the workplace. My name is Sadia Rose, and I've worked in recruitment, corporate training, and student advising for over nine years. I'm a strong advocate for continuous learning, and I recently completed a master's degree in education. I've been working at Humber College in Toronto, Ontario for over four years, where I teach a 15-week career development course, and I ensure that students and recent alumni are prepared to enter the workforce with confidence. But when I'm not working or learning something new, I'm either hosting games nights for my friends or family, or I'm trekking to farmers markets across Ontario. Now, the online learning experience can really be isolating. So it's important that educators find creative ways to connect students and provide a community of learning that's inclusive and fosters a sense of belonging. So let's jump right in. These are the four tools that we'll be talking about today. Podcasts, online polling, discussion blogs, and Twitter. So as a career educator and recent grad, I have witnessed the impact that podcasts, online polling, discussion blogs, and Twitter have had on learner engagement and the development of student voice. To get students in an online environment adequately prepared for the workforce, instructors really need to incorporate learning strategies that are active and that give students the space, voice, audience, and influence needed to be active citizens responsible for their personal learning. And studies suggest or show that students who interactively participate in classes learn the material better, they're able to retain concepts longer, and can apply them more effectively than students who do not. Now let's have a look at our learning outcomes. This session will highlight the value of podcasting and how it promotes student empowerment and creativity, the benefits of creating online learning communities through Twitter, ways to incorporate online polling and its impact on engagement, skills developed through discussion blogs, and practical ways to implement these strategies in your curriculum. So our first digital tool that we're talking about today is podcasts. So podcasting allows anyone with a microphone, an internet connection, and a viewpoint or opinion to instantly share it with the world. It is a digital audio or video file that's created and then uploaded to an online platform to share with others. Students can listen while jogging, while doing laundry, or from wherever they are. They are. And it facilitates ongoing discussion and debate about issues. It promotes dialogue and it supports various perspectives. All right, so I had a great discussion recently with Paul Cross and Mark Anthony Karam. So they're the gentlemen that you see in this, in this slide. Um, they're from the Faculty of Media and Creative Arts at Humber. So Paul is a radio broadcaster. He's a podcast creator and he hosts Crosstalk which is a podcast series that explores current events in the media. He also coordinates the postgraduate radio broadcasting program at Humber, and he teaches courses in radio news and creative program production. And Mark is also a podcast creator and he hosts, um, how, do we, how Did We Get Here? That uh, podcast that he started at the start of the pandemic. He's also a full-time design professor. So he interviews design professionals, educators, and alumni with a focus on capacity building while prioritizing mental health and wellness. And both Paul and Mark incorporate the flipped classroom approach in their curriculum, where students are asked to listen to a particular episode and come to class prepared to discuss um, and explore what was learned. Students have the options of uh, discussing asynchronously as well through social media. Now, Paul's postgrad students are asked to create a demo of a series. They pitch their ideas, um, which are either approved or tweaked a bit. And the assignment allows students to apply the concepts that they learned in class. Mark facilitates a six hour podcast workshop during play days. So play days is a learning module in week eight um, of the semester at Humber that allows students to break out of their curriculum and do something new. Students come up with a topic that's connected to their interests, and they are taught the skills needed to create a podcast using Adobe Audition. 
After editing, they publish on SoundCloud and their colleagues are encouraged to leave comments with constructive feedback. So both professors shared that students respond well to podcasting and it really stimulates their critical thinking, their written and intercultural communication skills. And Paul shared that through listening to podcasts, students get another perspective from a voice they wouldn't otherwise have heard. It also helps students to provide and receive constructive critique. And Mark expressed that this learning tool is accessible. It allows students to enhance their virtual footprint and provides autonomy over their learning. So I also shared a survey with media, creative arts and communication instructors to identify if and how they incorporate podcasts as a learning strategy. So 20 instructors responded, 90% have used podcasts while teaching and most respondents use podcasts as a supplementary course material, while other used it for, others used it for lecture notes to develop student generated content and to record feedback. 75% of the participants felt that podcasting had a positive impact on student voice and engagement. And when asked if they would recommend podcasting to their colleagues, the responses were very positive. Uh, you can see in the comments here, some commented that, you know, anyone with a cell phone is able to make a podcast. It's a low barrier to entry. It gives students a means of expression beyond written work, right? Um, faculty helps, you know, students gain insights. Uh, they're able to build community. And again, that various perspective uh, on subject matters comes up. Uh, it promotes mobile learning. Um, it's low bandwidth. And just overall, students have had very positive, like, positive experiences. Okay, so on to our next digital tool. This is uh, Twitter, Twitter, the infamous Twitter. <laughs> the image on the left is a screenshot of my Twitter profile page. I actually had to um, a little bit reluctantly join the platform last year as a requirement of one of my grad courses. But at the end of the 10 weeks, I really appreciated the learning community that we developed and realized the value of the platform. So Twitter is a microblogging tool where users can post messages, tweets, call tweets of up to 280 characters, as well as links, photos, and videos, polls, and now live video streaming. It can be used from a variety of connected devices, whether it be computers, smartphones, tablets. It delivers informal learning beyond the classroom. Now, Twitter helps to foster and promote professional learning networks. Um, it helps with collaborative writing, uh, discussing topics, building social presence, and exploring language. And in my tech and curriculum grad course taught by ed tech expert, Dr. Rob, Rob Power, some of you might know him, we were given asynchronous tasks to complete throughout the week. And for one of them, we had to contribute regular resources on Twitter based on the module, and we had to use the class hashtag. So this really helped me to connect outside of the classroom with a number of my colleagues who I've really been able to develop much stronger relationships since then. Um, and thoughtful discussions have come out of so many of the resources shared. So now we're moving on to my favorite digital, digital tool, my favorite e-learning tool, online polling. Here are some of the more popular applications. Have you used any of these in class or during a presentation? What's your favorite? So these applications, also known as audience response systems, are used for collecting data and engaging learners by posing questions. It allows instructors to gather real-time feedback from their students through in-class polling or quizzes. The system allows users to register their votes or responses using mobile phones, tablets, or other portable computing devices with either data service or wireless internet connectivity. Facilitators can include online polling either before the student learns a new lesson, and this helps to spark curiosity. It tests their pre-existing knowledge or any of their biases. Um, they can incorporate online polling either mid-lesson. So this is a good way to remind students of some of the concepts that were taught and maybe to test their ability or at the end of the lesson. And this helps to, um, to recall that short-term memory and reinforce knowledge and prepares them for maybe upcoming lessons. So quick story. So my love for online polling started back in 2017 when I participated in a research study conducted by the Center for Teaching and Learning at Humber called Cutting Edge. So the research was focused on examining the impact of using mobile apps in the classroom. 
and the goal was to discover whether in-class polls affect student engagement, metacognition, satisfaction, and learner interaction. And essentially, which in-class polls were preferred? So this was a nine-week project, nine weeks. I had um, 20 other faculty members that participated, but I collaborated with seven through focus groups every three weeks. I had to incorporate one new polling tool, again, every three weeks into my lesson plan, including Kahoot, uh, Mentimeter, and Clickers. Students were asked to complete um, evaluations, again, during that three-week period. And at the end, we were all, students and faculty were asked to, to complete uh, cumulative feedback on all three polling tools. So the results showed that the polling tools were overwhelmingly popular, both for faculty and students. Levels of engagement were high, and the tools improved awareness of students' conceptual understanding. Students showed a preference for one app in particular, which is Kahoot, and many faculty expressed a sense of renewal, excitement, and experimentation with their teaching. So including these e-learning tools during your course will really help to, um, to create cooperative learning environments. Students can work together or individually. It helps to promote stimulating discussion, decision-making, it's student-centered, and it reinforces material and content. Um, there are a couple of cons in, the, in that it is live, and so device or connectivity issues may occur, and there might be time constraints, especially if curriculum has to be revised based on students' responses. And finally, we're at our final tool. This is um, discussion blogs. So studies show that blogging is a powerful tool for creating a learning community. It can lead to stronger classroom discussions. It promotes reflection, critical thinking, and communication skills. And there's a possibility for future connection with course materials. In one of my graduate courses, we were asked to contribute at least two posts on blogger.com or blog posts were essentially a deep dive into a specific topic within a module. So the goal was to share ideas among peers and in the larger educational community. So I put a couple of screenshots here of uh, some of my blogs. And as for example, in week seven, the topic was gamification and game-based learning. So I decided to do some research and I created a cool infographic on Canva and I shared it on blogger.com along with my research. And then the following week, we had to uh, talk about mobile learning and those type of tools. And so I created another infographic that looked at the benefits, again, of podcasts, which is something that we spoke about today. So many learning management systems um, within higher education also have discussion boards. And that's also another really effective tools to get students to engage in meaningful discussions, information sharing, and collaboration. And I use Blackboard Learn. And again, um, a lot of asynchronous discussion happens using the discussion boards and it allows for lots of reflection. So we're towards the end of our presentation. And at the end of the day, our goal as educators is really to help students successfully navigate the global economy. So these four tools will help to promote dialogue, which encourages critical pedagogy and it gives everyone a voice. Curriculum that incorporates student views, experiences, and feedback will re really provide learners with a positive sense of self and will help them to acquire new skills while developing inquiring mindsets. As we mentioned earlier, these new skills may include critical thinking, creativity, innovation, communication, collaboration, uh, social and cross-cultural skills, among so many others. So with that being said, are you ready to try out these tools? Ready, set, go. Good. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, um, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll be sharing the slide deck, including references on my website, thelearningpartner.ca. And if you have any questions, um, again, or comments about the presentation, if you wanted to collaborate on any upcoming projects, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, um, or through email at sadio.rose at thelearningpartner.ca.